If you're a Lakers or a Nets fan, please don't overreact to the game one losses, bro. It's not going to do any justice. Just chill, learn from what y'all saw, and get ready to move on to the next games. What to do, YouTube family? It's your boy Rob, and I'm back on the Rob with the mic where I sit here and I talk hoops to those I listen. You can you can hear me talk hoops. I'll be talking some some common sense sometimes, most of the times. Sometimes I'll be on here talking straight cap and just being biased to my teams. But today, you know, I'm here for day one of NBA basketball. We had two good games. I don't want to say great, but they were good games. And yeah, I'm just here to talk about it. Make sure you subscribe. We're trying to do something good this year, this NBA season, grow this channel even more. And I can't do that without your help, so subscribe. Now, let me be honest. The first game of the season, the first game of today's day one of NBA basketball, I didn't want, I, I missed a little bit of the Nets versus the Bucks. Why? Because I'm at work. This don't pay me, YouTube don't pay me, so I have to get a job to get a check. But from what I saw, I mainly saw the second half of the game, so some of the second quarter. And when I saw it, it was pretty interesting. I thought I thought the Nets were okay, you know? I thought they could have been better. But I didn't see nothing to stress about. Like a lot of, I've seen stuff on Twitter and like people are stressing about all oh, their defense and stuff like that. It's all gonna come together. To me, to me for the Nets, their main issue was, I don't know why I keep doing that, but their main issue was their their lack of scoring without it being Kevin Durant or James Harden. They just, they nobody else was getting their own. Even when I was pat, watching Patty Mills in the second half, he was being more passive than what I'm used to watching when he was in San Antonio. Not like I didn't see him really getting his threes going, getting that groove going like he usually do, especially in the early of the season. So that was one thing that I noticed. But everything else, it was like, it was just, it was the same old nest from last year, basically. You know, you got your Blake Griffin. Blake Griffin didn't really score that often. It, it's a weird complex with that team. Moving on to the moving on to the Bucks. I still did it again. Moving on to the Bucks though. You feel me? I picked the Bucks to win this game and I thought that was the most safe team to pick. Because this is a team that keep basically has the same team that they had from last year. So the chemistry's already there. So you don't have to really stress about any adjustments or anything. Giannis was probably the best player on the court. He showed on both sides of the floor like he always does. And I didn't really see much of Chris Middleton. No. Yeah, like from the second half of the game I watched, I didn't really see much from Chris Middleton. I probably missed it. Like I said, I was at work trying to watch the game. So I don't know. I don't know his impact. I'll probably look it up. Hold on. Yeah, okay. So Chris Middleton, he had, he had a solid game. He had a 20 piece, but his field goal percentage wasn't really that good. Shot 25% from the three, 8% between from the field. So he wasn't that good. But Giannis on the other half had a 32-14-7. And pretty much had all the wrong game like you would expect. So, yeah, like I said, Giannis was probably the best player on the court. On the other side of the ball, looking at the stats, you know, KD did his thing like he always did his KD. Interesting. If you guys were listening to the broadcast of that game, I forgot who was commenting that game. It was like, I think it was Stan Van Gundy or the uh, the play-by-play -play commentator. They said KD is shooting they would say he was struggling shooting, right? But he was still shooting above 50%. So that just shows you how great of a score he is. That's just a side note. But, like, that's crazy, ain't it? That just shows you how great a score KD is. That even on a bad night, he's still shooting better than most players' percentage. Wow, look at me doing all that talking. <laughs> I'm tripping. Patty Mills was hooping off the bench. Bro drops. Bro went 7 for 11. He had 7 threes. What game was I watching? I did not see them 7-3s at all. And he only had like two assists. I'm tripping. I don't know what I was talking about. Like I said, I did not watch that game. So let me move on to the game I did watch, which is most teams who care about whatever I just said, the Lakers versus Warriors. This game I watched from start to finish. Start to finish. I would say start to like a minute and 30 seconds left in the game finish. But it was a fun one. You know, you got to see the Lakers newly big three you got to see the warriors you know without clay just yet but still from the same like the same team from last year basically and that's why when i was watching the game i was going for the warriors even though i like the lakers like the lakers are one of my teams i was like i'm gonna go with the warriors on to be on the safe time because they're a team that already have this built-in chemistry they got the same team basically from last year only two new players probably played which is like iggy Moses Moody, the rookie, and ne 
this stretch big I called him I don't know how to say his name but you know what I'm talking about he was a big reason for why they won today but let's start with the Lakers you know I'm gonna start with the Lakers and there, there's a lot of things to unpack with this team but I'm not gonna overreact to it a lot of people on Twitter are already trending Westbrook which is fine I understand he didn't have a great game but I think it's I think it's gonna be on Frank Vogel to figure this out at the same time because there's lineups out there with the rust where he can't be rust. I don't know why I keep doing that. Where he can't be Russell Westbrook. Like while I was watching the game, I was like, man, let me go watch some Russell Westbrook highlights so I can figure out how the Russell Westbrook used to play. Like I never really watched Westbrook. He was never on one of my teams, so I never really watched Westbrook. So I'm probably gonna watch some Westbrook highlights just to see how Russell Westbrook plays. Like. How did he get his own buckets? Because he was not able to get his own buckets that time. Either he would turn the ball over or it'll be a foul. I think they say he shot two for nine. That's just not acceptable. But on the other side, the other big two, LeBron had an incredible game. 30 plus point game. Double double, if I'm not mistaken. Really was like <laughs> Miami Heat Bron almost. Like he was really out there hooping. And AD had him had himself a dominant game. I feel like on both sides of the wall, I was really impressed. Especially just my last memory of him from last season to see him now. I'm like, okay, this is the AD we all know and love. Honestly, I was really impressed with AD on both sides of the ball. Yeah, he fell down a couple of times, and we know he's going to do that. And he did worry me. He grabbed his ribs sometimes, and you know, it's AD. He's always going to get hurt in the game. But I wasn't really worried though i was like i was happy i was in i was engaged with his gameplay you know i like the shots he was taking he was creating what he did on the defensive end he was good the role players for the lakers saying on lakers i thought they played pretty well too you know they came in hit a lot of shot shots every bradley didn't play the first half and third quarter they came in at the end of the fourth to start guarding jordan Poole, who was going crazy let me let me let me let me stand the war at lakers before i go to them he, he knocked down two threes for them. Helped them a little bit, but it just wasn't enough. I feel like Kent Bazemore was pretty good. Malik Mug was pretty good. Melo was pretty good. And I think the role players really were well. It's more of the... I, I don't want to put the blame on refs. Because it's only game one, so I'm not going to blame anybody. It's just one game. But, you know, Russ just has to be better. Because if Russ gives you 15 instead of his 9 or whatever, I got to check how much he has. But whatever that was, if he gives you like, sorry, if he gives you like 18, 15 to 18, you win the game. Instead of having two for nine and like five plus turnovers, you know what I mean? Now, moving on to the Warriors. Warriors were, I was saying this last year. They're one of those, they're one of my favorite teams to watch outside of my, my favorite teams that I watch. They're one of my favorite teams to watch. Because their ball movement and their unselfishness is It's probably the best in the league honestly when it comes to just making sure you don't keep that ball Because you know, you know your play call and you just gonna move that joint You just like they just move that joint bro. They didn't move that joint I mean that ball didn't stick Steph will give that ball up. They will rotate that joint Boom, because they would double off Steph, leaving somebody open. That open person will roll off a screen or whatever, open layup. Or it's like they'll leave off a Draymond, Draymond get in the middle of the court, lob up to Kevon Looney. That happened once, I think. Just the simple, the simple basketball. They they make basketball look very simple. Moving the ball, creating open shots, live with misses, and they they just showed why. They're going to be a competitive team this year, especially when one of the greatest shooters that ever played the game comes back. They're going to be very special this year. Individual play, let's talk about Jordan Poole. I mean, it was obvious. That boy's going to be a problem this season and for years to come. His shot creating is, is, is coming up there. His shot creating is coming up there with some of the best in the league. He's very confident with his stroke on the three. Mitty is good and his drive. He understands the game. He like If you watch Jordan Poole, two years ago you knew he was kind of nice he just needed the opportunity last year he was starting to get that opportunity this year it's his time you know like he's really gonna get the opportunity most people say he's gonna have that jordan clarkson kind of flow like he's just going to come in and just give to give the team energy and buckets that's the job 
you know, when I was watching the game, I was like, <laughs> I said this to myself, imagine if Steph had an elite, like a Bradley Bill next to him. You know what I mean? Imagine he had a Bradley Bill next to him, but I think I forget, like, he played with one of the greatest scorers of all time, Kevin Durant, so we know how that worked. But, like, when I'm watching him and Draymond, I just feel like sometimes with him and Draymond, it's like, I give it Draymond the ball, it's like, damn. You know, Draymond's not going to get a bucket. No, no offense to Draymond because he's about to make the right read, but he just can't give you that scoring option from three. Like Draymond didn't shoot, don't shoot threes that often anymore. So it's just like that lackluster of offensive firepower that can help him be even more dangerous on the court. Cause you can't just leave. You can't just double him like they do. Even when you do w, double him, you still can't guard him. But <laughs> you know, just imagine if he had like, had like a Bradley Beal next to him. When I'm in Bradley Beal, just replace Draymond with I can't even think of nobody. Just any other scoring big and it'll be it'll be a problem. But yeah, I think I hit all the points, all two teams that I'm gonna do. Hey, this is my year, bro. I'm I'm about to grind this gym. I'm about to grind this joint. I'm I'm about to grind this joint. I'm excited for what I'm gonna do on this channel. Like I said, make sure you don't overreact to this game one, bro. Game game one's I did this last year too. I was quick to write off the Warriors. Quick to write them off at the game one. They got smoked by who? The, the Nets. Smoked by him. <laughs> smoked off the smoked off the Nets by the Nets. Then they had the eighth seed to end the season. Didn't make the postseason, didn't make the playoffs, but they had the eighth seed. At the end of the regular season, they had the eighth seed. I thought they were gonna have the number one pick in the draft. But they was like, nah, we good. BM man, that's all I gotta say. This is probably my best Robin and Mike episode that I've done. Where I actually felt like I made sense. <laughs> like I actually made sense. But I'm not gonna keep you on no longer. Leave a subscribe. Make sure you subscribe, man. Leave a like too to help us grow the channel. We're trying to build something good over here, but you cannot do that without your help. And I'm out.